Testing, testing. Okay, there we go. <laughs> So these are two saws you would commonly find at most garage sales or estate sales and uh, uh, or resale shops and I'd kind of like to show you two different methods of cleaning up saws. Uh, this particular one is a Distin. Um, it's a fairly nice, uh, you can tell with the, uh, the lamb's tongue that has been done, the handle is fairly well done, uh, it has a nib on here, um, it's a seven point cross cut. And, uh, it doesn't need a whole lot of work. There is a little bit of an etch. I'm going to try and save that, but I don't know if I can. Um, this one is a, uh, a much more recent uh, uh, post-war Distin. You can tell the lamb's tongue hasn't had a lot of work done on it. <coughs> and the handle is pretty cheap. It's got this flat face and, and it's, it's, not, it's not a very comfortable saw. Um, it has been sharpened a few times. It does have a sway back. Uh, but it's got a lot of rust and the beginnings of some pitting on it. Uh, and so this one's going to take a lot more work. So I want to kind of show you two different methods on uh, restoring these and getting them up to running shape. Let's start by taking these apart. Uh, I use this uh, right angle screwdriver. It has a very thin slot head. It makes it very easy for loosening these and putting a little bit of leverage onto them. Once I've loosened up all the nuts, then I'll come back with a regular screwdriver and uh, tighten uh, and take them out. Uh, I'm being very, very careful not to strip them out. Nothing's worse than stripping something out right off the bat. And then I'll use a, uh, a chisel edge or a card scraper to clean up all the surfaces. I'm trying to get off all the old lacquer and shellac that has uh, chapped, chipped over time and uh, take it back down to a surface that I can then finish. Uh, the card scraper is great for a lot of the large flat areas, but uh, the tight curves, uh, the chisel edge actually works very, very well for cleaning them up. Once that has all been taken down, I give them several coats of uh, boiled linseed oil, let that soak in completely, and then uh, do paste wax to, uh, to seal it and give it that nice finish. Um, I did a whole video recently on boiled linseed oil and paste wax finish, so if you want to see more on that, you can look at uh, that video. For the nuts on the saws, um, I use them on a sanding block to take most of the crud off and down to a nice surface. And then I'll use the strop to actually smooth them out and buff them to a nice shine. It's actually very easy with the brass ones. Uh, the steel is a little more difficult to get a nice shine, but uh, you can in the end. For the actual plate, I use WD-40, and I start with about a 60 grit sand block and uh, just grind on it. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to get through as much of the, the grime and old rust as I can. This saw uh, plate isn't that bad, and so that's why I'm not putting it in a vinegar dip. But I'll do like 60 grit, and then uh, like an 80 or 100 grit, and then I'll finish up with like a 150 grit sandpaper. Uh, each side ends up taking me about uh, 20 to 25 minutes. Uh, it's kind of slow work, um, but you end up with a really nice surface, and it's a great way to try and save an etch if it's on there. Uh, you still have to be careful not to sand through the etch, uh, but this is one of the least des destructive me methods. Then you get left with this nice finish. Uh, for the plate that has a lot of rust, it would end up taking me an hour or more per side, so I actually soak it in this bath of vinegar and water, 50-50 uh, vinegar and water, and I'll let it sit in there overnight. Um, and then I'll take it over to the tub and rinse it off. Using a uh, wire brush, uh, you can actually scrape off most of the scale and junk. Um, and this makes it a fairly quick process after this to, uh, to, to finish up and make it shiny. I'll take it over to the bench and quickly apply a WD-40 so that I, it doesn't want to rust after having that water on it. And uh, just like before, I will uh, sand it from a 60 to 100 to 150. Um, but it only takes about five minutes aside with this because the vinegar has loosened everything up and you're really just kind of putting a shine back onto the uh, the finish of the saw. So this is a, a fairly quick process in comparison. Uh, when you wipe it off you get to see uh, the nice look and uh, I, I really like the, the finish that the vinegar leaves. After that I take it over to the uh, the other end of the bench and start sharpening it. Um, I've done several videos on uh, sharpening hand saws, so I'm not going to bore you with all the details from this. Uh, if you want to, you can go see those. Uh, they have a lot more detail on that. 
But that's about it for the finishing. It's just uh, putting the handles back on, and uh, you have just restored a handsaw. It really is not that difficult, and uh, anyone can do it if they have the, the time and patience to just uh, put into it. So there's a uh, quick look at how I uh, restore saws, and every saw is going to be a little bit different. Um, if the saw is in good condition, rule of thumb, do as little as you need to do. Um, the more you do, the more you're just going to be kind of pushing things around. Especially if there's any stamp or etching on the plate, um, you want to do as little as possible. Um, if there's any stamp or etching, I don't mess with vinegar because um, it will eat through that if you let it sit too long. Um, but vinegar is great for cutting through a lot of stuff. Um, and even on this saw, I had a good amount of pitting, which um, was able to re remove almost all of it, which is rather impressive. Um, I can actually see the uh, um, a previous uh, owner etched his name into the plate up here, and uh, that was kind of cool to come across and see. Um, and also, this one has been refiled. It says that it's a five and a half uh, PPI, but it's actually about a. Uh, Let's see, about a seven, I'm guessing. So um, that's why it is so thin. Someone has uh, refiled it um, and made it a lot less. But uh, that's kind of the idea between uh, uh, refinishing saws. There isn't a whole lot to it. Um, the hardest thing is probably sharpening it. But uh, if you can clean off the, uh, the handle, um, the plate goes pretty quickly. And uh, yeah, you have a, a great, high value saw that you can pick up for five or six bucks at a garage sale. Um, actually, a lot of my saws I pick up for a dollar a piece because uh, people have no idea what they want. So uh, the more you get to know your saws, uh, the more you know what you're looking for and uh, you can know what is a good value and what is a, a throwaway. So even saws like this that aren't uh, that old, um, it's still good steel and it's a, a, a good tool that you can resharpen and, and use for quite a while. So that's about it for this week. Um, I hope you liked this video. It was a, a fun one to put together. I had a lot of people asking about it, so I'm glad I can finally get the chance to put it out. Um, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I would love to uh, hear those and answer them. I want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon. Um, I cannot say how much of an encouragement you've been to me. Um, thank you for that. Um, if you want to be a part of that, feel free to check out my link right down there. And uh, if you did like this video, check out one of my others. You might find something you like there. And until next time, have a wonderful day.